Hi guys, how you all doing? All we're going to do today, we're going to make a chicken madras. Nice and easy, straightforward, simple curry. Okay, now you're in complete control of the madras heat when we get going. Uh, if you like it spicy, put more chili in. Now this is a very easy curry to make and I make it slightly different guys. What I will do, I will use tamarind and a little splash of Worcester sauce. Okay, now I like tamarind in my madras. Okay, now I would imagine originally tamarind was used. Tamarind is natural, it gives a nice depth of flavor and a fruity uh, touch to your curry, but it can be very, very sour. This is fresh tamarind guys, okay, and what they do, they take the tamarind out of the shell, lay it down, dry it out, scrunch it all into a bowl, and put it in a plastic bag and then they sell it here in Thailand. So what we need to do now, this has been dried slightly, we have to add some water and get this into a tamarind paste. So that's the first job. Now this is very, very easy. People use hot water, all sorts. This is cold water, room water. And there's only a little bit of water in there, okay? We don't need much. Now, we're not making a tamarind sauce, we're only trying to soften up the tamarind to get a little bit of tamarind pulp. So it's quite easy, really. Leave it to soak for about five minutes, give it a scrunchie up, and then we'll have our tamarind paste. And then we need to get cracking with the curry. Okay, so this is a very easy curry to get going. What we need to do is we need to add some oil to our pan. Okay, a little bit of oil. Or, or we could add ghee. Entirely up to you, so we'll add both. Now we need to get the flame on. Now, we need to warm this oil up. Coat the bottom of the pan. Now this is nice and straightforward guys, it's a simple recipe, okay? Everybody thinks madras is really hard to make, it's not. But you know, I'm using an, an ingredient which is called degi myrrh, okay? Now degi myrrh is capsicums and Kashmiri red chilli, so it actually gives a bit of heat in there but it gives a nice red colour, so I recommend anybody getting hold of a packet of Degi Myrrh. Right, there's our oil. Turn it down a little bit. We don't want this too hot. Okay. We don't want this too hot, guys. And then we want to go in with our garlic and ginger. Now, you can use just garlic or you can use garlic and ginger. Okay. So we've got about Half a chef spoon, not even that really. Get that in there. Now this is too hot, it's sizzling too high, so we need to turn it down. What we don't want to do, we don't want to burn this in any way. We want to extract the flavor and cook for an aroma, nothing else. So this is nice and easy. Obviously don't turn it down too much that you can't cook it. We need to cook the rawness out. So, nice and steady, cook out your garlic and your ginger. As soon as you can smell that really nice aroma coming off there, it's fine. As always, make sure we clean down as we go along. Okay, then what we need to do, because it's a madras, we need to add a really good pinch of methi leaves and a good pinch okay now get that cooked in nice and steady that will release the flavors in there methi leaves again now a tip with the methi leaves guys store it in the fridge everybody stores in packets on the side you know 
and then have a trouble crumbling it up to put it in even though it's dry but if you store it in the fridge it actually keeps fresh doesn't lose its flavor or strength and it's easier to crumble so there we are that's taking that down nice and steady it's not hard this guys it's very very simple and then what we want to do we want to go in with about a tablespoon of mixed powder and then what we want to do is add a good tablespoon of, ca of our deggy myrrh now this is Kashmiri chilies and red bell pepper capsicums as we say and then you want to be adding whatever chili powder you like as a madras heat I'm adding just over a heaped teaspoon so we want to give that a stir in we don't want to be burning any of these cook it nice and slow oh, oh. we need to release the um, chili and spices into the oil so cook it nice and slow on a low heat we do not want to burn any of these spices so this is starting to catch the bottom of the pan but it's not burning you know now we need to go in with our tomato puree so in with our tomato puree and we have about a tablespoon of tomato a heaped tablespoon of tomato puree watered down one for one now you know a madras a madras curry is very tomatoey so we got to get the tomato flavor in there you know so get that in there give it a stir around nice and steady and then what we're going to do we're going to add a pinch of salt okay and as you can see <coughs> it's as spicy as heck as you can see it's not burning but it is now just starting to catch the bottom of the pan but we have this lovely spice blend already if you can see so what we need to do we need to go in with a little bit of base gravy not much Get your base gravy in there give it a stir in <coughs> excuse me oh this is a madras heat all right stir that around loosen up from the bottom <coughs> excuse me loosen up from the bottom of the pan nice and easy now it's not sticking as you can see it's not catching anymore so we just need to cook that for a little minute nothing hard about this recipe guys so just cook this for a little minute make sure all the rawness is gone now have you ever wondered what's going on in the BIR when they're all it's because they're scraping everything off the bottom of the pan because they're cooking too hot nice and gentle cook it through don't forget we're cooking at home we don't need to be cooking like this you know we just need to be making sure our spices are cooked out in our pan so that's it basically it's very easy and then we need to be adding some pre-cooked chicken guys so you add as much as you want I'm gonna go for a double portion here I think actually then I can have some tomorrow for breakfast so I'll put some of that in as well there we go so what we need to be doing is stirring that in and cooking that through now this smells incredible the smell coming out of this pan is superb so 
So just warm that through, warm that chicken through, get it cooking up, but keep an eye on it. We don't want to be burning anything. Control the heat, turn it up or down. You're in complete control. But we don't want to be burning this, so don't go too hot. Well, that smells absolutely fabulous. Right, guys, this is the time now when you either add le lemon juice, lime juice, fresh lime juice, which we'll add a little bit anyway, just to show you. Okay, so we'll add a half a not even a half a tablespoon because I don't really want to be using lime juice okay what I do want to be using is about a good half a tablespoon of tamarind paste now tamarind paste adds a fantastic sour element to a madras but it's also a full-bodied fruity sour element so we just cook that in there nice and gently and that will change up our flavor immediately so nice and steady let's not make it hard give it a oh it needs a little bit more sour ho oh ho so what we can do, we can add a little bit more tamarind, get that in there, and then we'll add a, a Worcester sauce. Now, this is Leon Perrin's Worcester sauce, and this is the Thai version. Okay, so because we're cooking this curry, we'll add a splash of posh Leon Perrin's Worcester sauce. Oh, can smell that. So in we go with a little bit more base. Stir that in. Now this is quite fiery actually. We didn't even really add that much chili powder. And also what you've got to remember, it depends on your chilli powders that you're using. Chilli powders have a different taste, a different flavour. Some are stronger than others. So some give a bitter taste more than others. Just be careful when you're actually adding your chilli powder. You know, there's no harm in actually dipping your finger in and giving it a taste and see what it's like. Wow, definitely a madras curry. Now with a madras, a madras you want to be adding your coriander into your curry, okay? So there's about half a tablespoon chopped up. We want to be adding that. And we actually want to cook that into our curry because this is one of the essential flavors in a madras. So it's sour, slightly sour, Obviously, you've got the curry flavour, it's tomatoey. And, and there again, depending on your tomatoes or what tomato paste you use, will depend on how tomato your, your curry is. So, nice and steady then. It's not hard, this at all. I mean, look at this. We have a wonderful, wonderful curry sauce already. Taste it. That is definitely a madras. Wow. Cook it nice and gently. Or oh, the tamarind paste, that's my own um, preferential flavor over lime juice or Worcester sauce. Because I like the more natural fruity flavors in my curry. But that's, you know, again, that's down to pre preferential taste. 
Now a madras is quite a medium thick curry, okay? But I like a lot of sauce and I've got more than enough chicken in there to make two madras curry. So I'm going to add a bit more base gravy and cook it all through. And then I have two portions. I have one for now and one for tomorrow. So I'll get that in there. So there we are. It can't be any more simpler than that, guys. You know, we're not knocking out hundreds of thousands of therms. It's nice and steady. But that is absolutely fabulous. It's red hot. Oh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. So let's check our chicken. Okay, now this is cooked already guys, all right? Not a problem. This is cooked through already. So all we need to do now is just warm it up or cook it down to whatever thickness that you want your curry to be. I mean, that is a good curry consistency already. That is amazing. So that is a madras, guys, so easy. Amazing, absolutely amazing curry sauce. Let's look at that for a madras. So what we want to do then, we actually want to put some sauce in the bottom. Whoa. Oh man. And then we want to add some chicken. And then dress it up guys with just a little bit of lemon and just a little bit of coriander and just look at that absolutely amazing <laughs> 